In this strange time, we worship differently, separate but connected, physically distant yet spiritually united. To enhance your participation in this service of worship, I ask you to find a candle uh, somewhere around the house. If you got the this week notice uh, in the mail, in your email, uh, you might have gotten the candle out already. Go ahead and take that candle and light it at this time. And we'll wait for those who might be looking for one. You can hit the pause button at this point if you want to go find it. Now that your candle's lit, I invite you to take a breath. Breathe in. Give thanks for the gift of life. Breathe out. Give thanks for the cleansing spirit within us. Breathe in. Prepare to worship with your brothers and sisters in faith. Breathe out. Relax. We will also be doing a bit of an experiment. You'll see a computer in the front row here. Uh, it is uh, watching the service of worship uh, with a Zoom uh, conference, a teleconference. We're going to do an experiment with a limited number of people this week. And if it works well, we might expand that out to more congregational members who can participate in that way. And so please uh, uh, forgive uh, the computer sitting there, but know that uh, we're trying something electronically here today. Let us now join together in facing our faults and hearing God's gracious forgiveness. The liturgy uh, will be printed on the screens for you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to watch over our sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you there is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. For we confess that we have turned away from you, knowing and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Receive this good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. <laughs>
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. From above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Offer here their worship and praise. Let us praise to the, pray to the Lord. and defend us, gracious Lord. Welcome to worship, friends and guests. This is a service of worship, and there are eight of us here again this week to lead us in our common worship together. It is a service of worship for all who are gathered, whether in this room or electronically. Uh, And uh, I think uh, my wife said that I mentioned last week that it was challenging to preach to empty pews. And so uh, she got a wise idea, and Natalie and Janice helped out with it. And uh, they solved the problem of empty pews in kind of a unique way. I think we've got a picture of that uh, that you're going to be able to see here in just a second. There it is. There are pictures of all of you uh, taken from the last picture directory, uh, printed out and taped to the pews. And uh, Natalie and Janice worked hard to try and place you in the places where you normally sit. And so you'll see right here in the front row, you have the Avalas right there, and uh, Dina is on the end of that row there too. Uh, And then we have the uh, Monday night crew here in the second pew. We've got uh, the uh, uh, Josh and his family over here on the right-hand side with Rebecca, and it goes all the way to the back. It's really fun. I just, uh, it was a surprise to me when I got here this afternoon. I was laughing uh, for quite some time. Uh, You are here at least in one way. And uh, to all of our guests who are with us in this worship service, we welcome you as well. We hope that this worship service is a blessing. I'm Pastor Todd Iverson, and this is Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church, a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And we're going to be using the texts for the fourth Sunday in Lent this week, actually. Uh, I was supposed to be on vacation this week, uh, leaving last Friday. And uh, so Trevor Tome was going to be the preacher for this weekend, uh, for the fourth Sunday in Lent. I felt it important that I preach last weekend, but uh, he has a sermon ready to go, and we want to support our pre-seminarians here at Emmanuel, and so uh, Trevor will be preaching uh, today's uh, uh, sermon on the uh, Lent 4 texts. And so thank you to Trevor for preaching today. This is the fifth Sunday in Lent. Children of God, 
We have a calling and a purpose. God invites us to celebrate God's grace in Jesus Christ, accepting all unconditionally, and growing in God's call to serve the world. This is who we are, and at the same time, this is who we strive to become. We are a community that lives in loving service to neighbors and around the world by the power of Christ's Spirit. It is good to be gathered together in this way today. Um, all of our scripture readings today that are appointed for this weekend are really some rich texts. We um, hear in our first reading David being chosen as the next king of Israel. We hear Psalm 23, one of many people's favorite psalms. And then we hear Jesus giving sight to a man born blind. How are these texts related, you might ask? How will we use them? Well, you'll just have to wait and see. Now, this is usually the part of today's theme where Pastor Todd says, and that's our theme for our worship and for our week. But really, it's become a theme for our lives lately. We, we are watching and waiting to see how long will this virus last? We're waiting to see how long kids will be at home, waiting to see how long we'll have to be apart for worship. And we're waiting to see how long 500 rolls of toilet paper actually lasts. So yes, the theme for our worship and for our week and beyond is wait and see. This is the fifth Sunday in Lent. Let's pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Children's time. Hey, friends. We miss you all so much, uh, but it's children's time. So that means if you're playing with toys or you're eating with something, come on over uh, to the computer or the TV because we're gonna have a chat for a little bit. First of all, I wanna know, how are you doing today? Bless my God. I'm sorry, I could not hear you. We need to try that again. How are you today? Bless my God. That's right, today and every day, we are blessed by God. It may not feel like it all the time, but we are blessed. We're healthy, hopefully. Um, we're on spring break right now, and we get to spend some time with family. There are so many ways that we are blessed. I'm sitting here right now because I wanted to show you a few things. It sounds like it's gonna be a little while before we can all come back to worship together here at church. So I thought this would be a perfect time for you to create a small prayer space in your house. You just need a few things. And you can put them on your kitchen table, or maybe in your living room, or wherever you're worshiping with us right now. One of the things Pastor Todd told us right before worship was to light a candle. And candles are special because they remind us of Jesus. In a few moments, we'll hear Jesus say, I am the light of the world. Sometimes things can feel dark or sad, but Jesus is the light that shines brighter, and we can share that light and love with others. This is a really special candle that we have here at church. It's called an eternal candle. That means that it burns all the time, whether or not we're here. Usually, we make sure that we blow out a candle before we leave the room, but this is a really different candle, and it, we keep it very safe. We have this candle here at church all the time as a reminder that Jesus' love never stops. Jesus is always the light of the world and the light of our lives. We have a really special member of our church, and her name is Maureen. Her family makes sure that we always have this light burning. She turned 100 years old in December, and she can't come to church anymore. But she knows and she helps remind us 
that even during the times that we're not at church, Jesus' love and light never stops. They shine brightly in the world and in our hearts, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whether we're here to see it or not. Another special thing that you can have is a cross. The cross is another reminder of Jesus' love for us. In a few weeks on Good Friday, we'll remember that Jesus died on the cross. And then on Easter, we'll remember that Jesus is alive again. I also have a Bible here. We read the Bible in worship and in Sunday school and at home because it has all of the stories of God's love for us. Since we don't have a bulletin insert, you can follow along with the scripture readings at home with your family. You can also add other things if you want to. I have some purple fabric here for the season of Lent, but whatever you have at home is great. I hope it helps all of us to pay attention and pray and worship together as we do a little, things a little bit differently. And you can use this space anytime you want to to pray. In fact, let's pray right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for your light. Thank you for your cross. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love and for each other, no matter where we are. In your name we pray. Amen. Our reading for today comes from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sac sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Elab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have rejected them and him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Raise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. 
Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Psalm 23, we will read together in unison. Please follow along on the screen. The Lord Lord is is my my shepherd. shepherd. I I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd. Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son? who you say was born blind, how then does he now see? His parents answered, 
We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Some of you know this, um, but I am a planner. I like structure. I like to be in control of the situation that I'm in. I think that even those of us who thought they didn't really care for structure are really missing it right about now. Last week, um, our interim bishop, Peter Rognes, said that here in Wisconsin, we're all used to canceling or missing worship because of a blizzard. It happens. But this is very different. After a snowstorm, we're usually back in the swing of things in a day or so, and we're definitely back in worship the next Sunday. Right now, we don't know when we'll be able to gather together for worship again. The thought of marking the holiest week of the year for us, apart from one another, is unimaginable. And yet, here we are. We don't know exactly how we got here, we don't know exactly where we're going, and we don't know how long this journey will be. But we know. We know and we trust that God is with us. And even though we're apart, we still have each other too. We just have to wait and see what God has in mind for all of us. 
You know, God has this way of choosing unlikely, unworthy people to be involved in all sorts of extraordinary things. We see that now in our own time, and we see that in our scripture readings for today. In our first reading, the prophet Samuel is sent by God to anoint a new king for Israel. God is less than impressed with King Saul, and so God sends Samuel to find somebody else. Specifically, he is to go to Bethlehem and choose one of Jesse's sons. At least God has narrowed it down just a little bit. The journey is dangerous. What if Saul finds out? Despite his concern, Samuel goes and does what is asked of him anyway. Samuel arrives, and Jesse presents his sons one by one, but none of them were who God was calling to be king. It was David, the youngest, the overlooked one out in the fields with the sheep. David, the one who would battle Goliath. David, the psalmist. David, the sinner. David, the shepherd turned king from Bethlehem town. God chooses the unlikely. And then we have this story of Jesus giving sight to the man born blind, a man who is used to sitting and waiting. In this story, we see the Pharisees who are so sure of themselves, confident that they are called by God, and this Jesus most certainly is not. Who is this man that bends all of the rules, heals on the Sabbath? God chooses the unthinkable. March 25th, which was just this past Wednesday, is nine months before Christmas. You should not be shopping right now, so please don't do that. <laughs> On this day, uh, the church celebrates a lesser festival called the Annunciation of Our Lord, recalling the angel Gabriel's visit to Mary, letting her know that she was the one chosen to give birth to the Savior of the world. Mary's yes, let it be with me according to your word, will change her life and the life of the whole world forever. Mary was probably around 13 years old. She was not yet married. She was not the perfect candidate, but God chose Mary anyway. In a few moments, we will sing one of my favorite hymns. I have a lot of favorite hymns, but this is one of them, Canticle of the Turning. It's based on the Magnificat, the song of praise Mary sings after this life-changing, world-changing news is shared with her. My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. She will give birth to Jesus, the light of the world. Mary knew. Mary knew that this baby would change the world. The world is turning and changing right now. How might we, like Mary, be bearers of this light, bearers of Jesus to the world? The world is a topsy-turvy mess right now, and in the midst of it all, God chooses us. It may seem dark, but God walks with us in this valley. God, our shepherd, provides all that we need. How can we serve in such a time as this? How will God use us to bring care, to bring calm, to bring justice, to bring peace, to bring light. We are probably not the best candidates for the task, but we are willing servants. We just have to wait and see, and see how God will use us. And then it's time to get to work. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As the church gathers together in prayer, know that this past Wednesday, Walt Chapman died. There will be a small gathering for family uh, this week, and the memorial service for him will be uh, later on when many can gather again together in one place. And so please do pray for Jean and for all the kids and the whole family. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of insight, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power. Raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender expression, race, or economic status. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of insight, empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Provide rich soil for crops to grow, bring rain to lands suffering drought, protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of insight, bring peace to all people and nations. Anoint leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all. Frustrate the efforts of those who would seek to cause violence or terror. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of insight, you care for our needs before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. Accomplish healing through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, nutritionists, and all who tend to human bodies. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of insight, help this assembly lift up the unique gifts of each person who enters, no matter their physical capacity, cognitive ability, or sensory need. Help us to be creative and brave in making our facilities and our ministries acceptable to and accessible to all. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Is Holy God, God of insight, give us eyes to see those who are suffering most in this world. Give us eyes to see those who are in great need in this time when we are called to be separate, to be physically distant from one another. Encourage us to be your servants, as ill-equipped as we are, to do your good work in this world, knowing that we have all that we need through you, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, you call out to those who are asleep and awaken them to new life with you. We give thanks for your saints, especially Walt. Join us together with them as your children in this world and the next. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, Hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace with one another at this time, but not uh, with a handshake or a hug, although at home in your family, I know that that social distancing or the physical distancing is next to impossible, if not totally impossible. But uh, when you encounter someone apart from your family, uh, share that peace with a bow, uh, remembering to honor them and their entire spirit. Peace. Talking about it again. But a word about your offering now. We give to the Lord out of abundant thanksgiving. I said it last week, and I'm saying it again this week. We give our offering to the Lord. And I remind us all of that each week when I say we now give our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. Thank you for your continued offerings. We have been able to avoid tapping into our line of credit, but without your continued support. Uh, sending your checks in or uh, doing electronic transfer of one sort or another, uh, we will need to uh, tap into that uh, at a time of year when we uh, should not be needing to do that. Please continue to be as generous as you are able, knowing that your life circumstances are possibly drastically changed from what they were at the beginning of the year. And I also ask you to also remember Hometown Missions, a fund that needs your support. Uh, there are many in great need, uh, and so uh, we want to reach out and help them as we are able in this time. Uh, we need your uh, generosity in order to make that happen. And so uh, please be as generous as you can with Hometown Missions as well. At this time, we give our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. Let us pray. Holy and generous host, you set a table where we feast as friends. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. A word about communion. It would be at this time that we would normally gather together around our Lord's table. For now, we are fasting from that meal and longing for its return as uh, we long to gather together again as a community of faith. Uh, until the restrictions are lifted, we will refrain from communion and we will refrain from gathering in large groups. I do look forward to our communal worship happening once again. The faces on paper are a fantastic reminder of our gathering together on a regular basis. But after our health officials give us the official go-ahead, and only until then, uh, we will say the Lord's Prayer at this time, together and slowly, so that each petition might sink in more deeply. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Maybe the strongest advocate for saying the Lord's Prayer slowly is Kathy Neverman. And I'm guessing that even though we slow it down a little bit here, uh, it's still too fast for her. She loves savoring every word of our Lord's Prayer. Well, welcome to this uh, uh, electronic worship together. I'm glad that we're able to get together at least in this way, uh, in this time. Uh, do reach out and connect with those who you know are uh, a part of this community of faith and you miss. Uh, give them a phone call. We have a phone tree in place for many of our folks that uh, do not have email. Uh, if you would like to be a part of a phone tree that would connect with everybody in the congregation, please uh, give me a, a, drop me a note, either call Janice or give me an email, and uh, we will uh, set you up with eight to ten names of folks that you can call to be sure that they're doing okay, and so that we can remain connected as a community of faith in this time. We have lots of pictures to share with you uh, as far as construction update goes. And so uh, not only is there exciting stuff happening on the outside, but there's a lot of work happening on the inside as well. The uh, siding is nearly complete. Uh, all four sides have most of the siding up, but now you can see in the basement all of the sheetrock is up. They haven't taped yet, but all of the sheetrock is in place. Here are a few of the rooms down in the basement. And then uh, also, Upstairs on the second floor, um, most of the sheetrock is in place upstairs as well. And that's one more downstairs picture. Oh, there's the brand new electrical panel. That's a big electrical panel. And then here's upstairs. Uh, we can see uh, that a lot of the sheetrock is already in place upstairs as well. And so things are moving along quickly uh, in the building. I look forward to uh, their continued progress. Uh, they too are considered an essential uh, work, and so uh, they continue to work in smaller teams uh, to be careful uh, to not catch the virus. If you are in need, if you find yourself at home alone, isolated, in any sort of need, please reach out so that we can connect with you. Uh, if you would like to be a part of the phone tree, either calling others or to be called, to be uh, picked a, if we don't have enough folks to call everybody, but you want to be sure to be contacted regularly, we would love to do so. People who are not in high-risk groups are needed to volunteer for many things, like meals on wheels, food pantry, personal essential pantry, which was open today, uh, the phone tree, and more. And so consider volunteering if you have time and if you are able. Call the congregation office to do that at 920-261-1663. Please do tune in for the reflection uh, from the midweek worship service as well. It can be found on our website. The overarching theme is community. Last week was uh, the local community, and we talked about God's work and our hands, and we cut out paper uh, trace tracings of our hands. Uh, we would love for you to send those uh, hands into the church so that we can display them up here in our worship space uh, as part of the Lenten display. This week is about the wider church that we are a part of, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Are there any other announcements to share with one another? Hi, guys. So I am the head of our youth and family team uh, for council, and I know we have at least two seniors in high school this year, and I know your senior year looks incredibly different than you planned on the end of it being. So I ask if you are a senior, if you know a senior, um, if you could write in and either drop Janice a line or maybe on our Facebook page or email me. I think my email is in the directory boxel.elizabeth at gmail.com with an idea for how we can best celebrate you this senior year. Um, we may not be able to do it as we have been able to in the past here at Church Gathered Together, but please know that we are thinking of you and praying for you and really just wanting to celebrate you with this beautiful transition of life. 
um, amidst all this craziness. So if you could drop me a line, that would be wonderful. Thanks. Thank you, Beth. Mm -hmm. We are planning on recording next week's worship service as well. Uh, we are going week to week trying to figure out uh, what uh, the week ahead looks like. And so do bear with us. Uh, this might get better from week to week or maybe not. Uh, but this is going to be the way that we worship together for the foreseeable future. Uh, please be patient with us uh, and please continue to join with us electronically as we gather for worship. Receive God's blessing. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen.